Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to our amazing, fascinating discussion, Tao Workshop. Reason just doesn't mean if I see it, I believe it. No. Actually, we believe many things from reason that we don't even see. Right? For example, who believes that they're going to have breakfast tomorrow or that they're going to go to work tomorrow or they're going to come here tomorrow? Who believes that? I'm not saying 100%, but who believes that they're going to come here tomorrow? None of you? Come on. I don't believe that. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. Unless you decided not to. Who believes they're going to come here tomorrow? Yeah? Most of you. Okay, based on what? Based on your schedule. Right? You could die. Of course you could die. Right? But so far, you've lived for how many years? 40 years. You haven't died yet. Have you got a heart disease? Have you got diabetes? Have you got some, you know, real cause to think that tomorrow you're going to drop dead? You could do. It's possible. But generally, our reason leads us to believe that I'm going to be here tomorrow. Something could happen, but is it reasonable to believe you're going to be here tomorrow? Yes or no? Yes. Can you see it? No. So you don't have to see something to have a reason to believe it's going to happen. So no, that's not a reason for God's existence. What I want to know is, how do we know there's a God? It's a good point. that We can't see God, so how do we use our reason to understand that there's God? Yeah? Yes. We have a perception of beauty. So everything is designed in this universe, and every design needs a creator. Okay. So the reason is, that your reasoning is, from universal human experience... Human beings, when we see something working according to design, working according to laws, working according to patterns, we universally, always, we have experienced that something has made that thing and has constructed that thing and has applied some laws to make it work in that way. Is that what you're saying? Right. It's a very good argument. This is an argument. So that's why, for example, if I find a pen lying in the street, do I think it just came from nowhere? If I find a pen lying on the street on the floor, oh, this just popped into existence from nowhere. Do I believe that? Why? Because our experience as human beings tells us that doesn't happen. I mean, the pen is made of what? Some metal and some plastic. Plastic is from oil. Metal is from alloy. I don't believe that, you know, somehow mysteriously this thing was formed by some random events. That there was a bit of oil and a bit of metal or, you know, and the boil thing and the, the pen just came. Do we believe that? No. Why? Because the pen has a shape. It has a form. It has a function. It has a very simple mechanism. Very simple. Comparatively. But still we are sure that someone has designed it. How about something even more simple? A piece of pottery. Just a fragment of pottery. That's made of clay. Baked earth. Yet an archaeologist will dig in the sand and find a piece of pottery. For this archaeologist, it is conclusive for him that there existed people who made it and he will tell you many things about this civilization by looking at this pottery. Because he will know in order to make the pottery like this, they must have been able to build ovens to bake the clay. And in order to build those ovens, they must have had this level of technology. And they must have been able to gather fuel in order to burn the fire for the ovens. So they must have had access to this and so many things he can tell you. From one piece of pottery. Although this piece of pottery is just earth. Isn't it very easy to believe that maybe, you know, there was a fire in a forest. Yeah, and there was some clay and this earth just became uh, baked. And it just happens to look like a piece of pottery. It's possible, right? But no, this archaeologist will be sure. Human beings made this. Someone designed it. Yeah? So the point being... We look at the universe around us and we see many examples of design. Things working according to systems. 
Can anyone give me some examples? Salim. When the baby is born, uh, what he gets from his mother is milk, which is very, has water content high, which is very thin because his digestive system is not strong enough. Later on, as the days goes by and the weeks goes by, the milk becomes thicker and thicker because by now the baby's digestion system has strengthened. Now, all this is intelligence and uh, it just can't happen out of, uh, you know, coincidence. It is proper okay. intelligence in it. What is the normal response that an atheist or someone who doesn't believe in God, or what would they might say to that? What would they reply? Yes. I have another reason. No. What might an atheist or someone who doesn't believe in God, what might they reply to this thing that Salim has said? Yes. He said it's just a, it's just a cycle. It's, yeah, just a, it's just a cycle of nature. They say it is evolved. They will say, although I agree, it is very, very difficult to see, especially something like you said, that the milk is changing at each particular stage. But I don't want to get into this too deeply. But generally, when we use examples, mostly we teach students not to use examples from the biological world. Why? Because... Generally, in science, the explanation that they have given, the naturalistic explanation, they say we don't need to explain this by God's existence because we can explain it through the process of evolution. Now, whether it's true or not is not so important here. What is important is that many people find that evolution is convincing. That's what's important. So now the problem is if we use this example, now we're up against, yeah? Now we have something we have to go up against. So we have an explanation, they have an explanation. For many people, this is a powerful explanation. Why should I take on a powerful explanation? Even if you think it's not, they think it is. Shall we find an easier way? Let's find something to talk about for which there is no powerful explanation. That's why we generally don't teach to use examples from the natural world. There are many examples, the camel, the termites, the birds, even Allah gives these examples in the Quran. I am not saying these are not good examples. But the problem is today, science has come up with this theory of evolution. Whether we believe it's powerful or not is not important here. Many people believe it's a powerful explanation. So, either we can take on this theory full on, and by the way, in order to do that, you're going to need some scientific knowledge, you're going to need a lot more studies. We can do that, but no. This is about simple dawa. So let us find a way that, or let us find a subject and a topic for which they do not have a comparable explanation. Yeah? So where else can we see organization in the universe where there is no possibility for evolution to happen, yet the organization is amazing. Yes. Ridwan. We can actually go the other way around and prove the evolution theory false. I mean, it's really no, no, we don't want to get into proving this. We don't want to get into discussing the argument. Listen, this go rap is about the simplest way of giving down. You see, this is why it has been designed to avoid difficulties making dawa easy as possible, making dawa effective. Alhamdulillah, it's great. If you want to study the subject, fantastic. But why have an argument when you can avoid it? Yeah? Okay, I don't want to have the argument with you, but believe me, if I argued from the point of view of the evolutionists, I believe most of you will not know what to say. And I don't believe in it. So how about you meet someone who does believe in it and they know more than me. I don't think it does us any service, by the way, brothers and sisters who are listening, to make fun of evolution, to make it as if it's nothing, to dismiss it. For most scientists, they believe this is the most powerful explanation that explains how life came to be on earth. And if you study it even a little bit, 
you will see it is very powerful. And to deny it is not to do us any service. Yes, it has some weaknesses, it has some issues, it has some problems. But probably most of you don't know what they are. Okay? So we just want to keep Dawah simple. We're going to take a short break, brothers and sisters. Don't go away. We'll be back soon, inshallah. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to our Dawah workshop. If you study it even a little bit, you will see it is very powerful. And to deny it is not to do us any service. Yes, it has some weaknesses, it has some issues, it has some problems. But probably most of you don't know what they are. Okay? So we just want to keep Dawah simple. So evolution is about biological life. How about some place where we find organization and it is not biological life? Yeah? Sujad, yes? Night and day at uh, regular intervals. Huh? Night and day at regular intervals. Excellent. And planets uh, in their orbits. Excellent. So what do we find? The alternation of the night and the day. The alternation of the night and the day. So as we know, the earth is spinning on its axis. And the earth, according to the heliocentric theory of the universe, the earth is going around the sun. How long does it take the earth to go around the sun? How many days? 365 days. Imagine the earth was going around the sun that quickly. Imagine a year was a second. Right? What would that do to our measurement of time? Imagine the earth was, we don't need to imagine. If the earth was as close to the sun as Mercury, would there be life on earth? Or if it was as far as even Jupiter, is it likely there would be life on earth? If you think about the size of the universe, the massive size of the universe, the fact that the earth is positioned at this optimal distance from the sun, that the size of the earth and therefore the gravitational pull on the things, the creatures that live on the earth is optimal for life to exist. If the gravity was too strong, it would be very hard for life to exist. If gravity was too weak, it would be hard for life to exist. So the earth is just the right size. If it was spinning fast, so imagine a day was a second and a night was a second. Or imagine it was spinning so slowly that say like a day was like 30 years. So that means the sun will be shining on one part of the earth for 30 years and the other part of the earth will be cold for 30 years. Do you think life would exist? Very unlikely. So doesn't this begin now to sound like a very finely tuned machine? How about the moon? The moon just happens to be at an optimal distance from the earth in order to regulate the tides of the ocean. What's the next biggest planet to us? Jupiter. I just learned this a few months ago. That if it wasn't for Jupiter and the size of Jupiter and the proximity of Jupiter to the earth, in other words, if Jupiter wasn't there and if Jupiter wasn't the size it was, the earth would be constantly bombarded by meteors and life would not exist. It just happens the gravitational effect of Jupiter pulls most of the meteors away from Earth. This is like a finely tuned machine, a precision instrument, optimal existence for life on Earth. This is much more complex than even this pen. You will never believe that a pen just happened by random events. So how about the condition of our earth and the universe. And by the way, we can give many, many, many examples on the level of the universe and on even the level when we go to quantum mechanics. Similarly, we find truly amazing balance of forces so that everything is in the optimal condition in order for life to be able to exist. Now, here's my point. What makes more sense? that this has been organized by a creator or that it just was some random event? What makes more sense? 
in the first one. That there is intelligence behind it and that there is power behind it. Based upon what? Universal principles. So then I give my example of the mobile phone. If you found a mobile phone, and this is a very nice example. Use an example with people in your dawah. Show people. Here's a pen. Here is my mobile phone. What if I found this in the desert? What if I just found this pen? Would you believe that it just came together like this? Most people say no. So then how about the universe? It's more complex. You can say, how about your mind? How about your eyes? You can, of course. I believe it's very powerful. I think it's ridiculous to imagine these things are a product of random events. Only if you meet someone who has a bit of knowledge and, you know, you will get into this. They cannot say this about the planet. There's no evolution of the planets. There's no way for it to happen. They don't have an explanation. Okay? So, this is what is normally called as the argument from design. It's still one of the most powerful arguments. Right? Even you find these top atheists like Richard Dawkins. He says, it looks like everything is designed. He agrees. It looks like it. He says, but it only looks like it. You think it's designed, but it's not really. But as one sheikh, he said, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, guess what? It's a duck. <laughs> it looks like it's designed. It seems like it's designed. Well, why should we conclude anything else except that? It's designed. Why would we want to conclude anything else unless you just don't want to believe it? Why not just take the most logical reason? Yes? So even these top atheists admit that the most obvious and logical explanation is the one they want to avoid. And all they can try and do is try to give reasons why it's less likely. The irony is they can't even give good reasons why we should not believe in God. They can just say, oh, it's less likely because of this and this. That's all. They're just trying to reduce the probability. So, okay. So if it's from 100% to 90% to 80%, you still you want to go with the 20%? That doesn't make sense. Who would go with 20%? If I said, go on this airplane, there's a 20% chance of dying or 20% chance you will live. Only 20 80% chance you die, 20% chance you will live. So 80% this airplane is going to crash. Who's going to go on the airplane? You, brother? <laughs> He's just scratching his ear. Who's going to go? No one, right? Most people would not do that. Yeah? Okay. So, so you see what I'm saying about the most reasonable argument. So as everyone understood the argument from design, it's very simple, very powerful. If that's all you can use with someone when you're talking to them, alhamdulillah, that's enough. Yeah? Let me give you another argument. It's also a very simple argument. This is more of a philosophical argument. You can add this or leave this or some people only use this argument. Okay? This is the argument from uh, causality. Yeah? Okay. Oh, by the way, sorry, let me just stop for a second. This argument from design, the argument from design, leads us to conclude that there must be some intelligence behind the universe, yes? We're not going to say what it is. We don't say God yet. We can say the Creator. But what we can know for sure is, number one, there must be intelligence behind this universe, yes or no? That's sure, right? And there must be power. Because whoever created the universe must be very powerful, or whatever created it must be powerful, yes? Intelligent and powerful, and it must have will, right? So these things we can rationally conclude that there must be intelligence, power, and will behind the universe. Are you with me so far? Okay, here's another argument. This is called the argument from causality, okay? Causality is, for example... If the glass of water is here, someone must have made the glass, right? And someone must have poured water in the glass. And if the glass over and the water spills, the cause of the water spilling is me knocking over the glass, right? It's not a coincidence that I just move my hand, hit the glass, and the water spill. They're not connected at all, right? So this is causality. That we accept this, right? 
that my moving the hand and knocking the glass is the cause for the water to be spilled. Right? So this is causality. So, do we agree that everything that begins to exist has a cause? Can you think of anything that began to exist that was not brought into existence by something? Right? A car. Did a car begin to exist at some time? Was it caused or did it just come into existence? Huh? It was caused, right? So everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe. The universe began to exist. So anyway, this today we can say is the, almost the consensus, if not the consensus of science. This is what they call Big Bang Cosmology. Big Bang Cosmology has pretty much shown that the universe began to exist. Right? So everything that begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist. So the universe must have a cause. Yeah? So what is the cause of this universe? Again, it's not hard for us to conclude that which caused the universe should be powerful and intelligent and have will for the reasons that we have stated. Okay? So these are two arguments that we can give for the existence of God. Why are there good reasons to believe that this universe has a creator? Has everyone got that? Can you practice it now? Yeah? You don't have to make all of these arguments. Make it very simple. Right? Just give the example of the mobile phone or the pen. 90% of people will find that enough.